You're Clayton Bright. I'm Clayton Bright. Let me take a quick look. Okay. <laughs> there I am. Very nice sculptures. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. In the fall of 2021, I made a movie about a legacy show of artist and PAFA teacher Arthur DaCosta. Arthur's work was exhibited along with that of a number of artists who had studied with him. That is where I met the amazing J. Clayton Bright. And although he is a wonderful painter, as these images make clear, Clayton is primarily known for his sculpture. So when I learned that Clayton was the 2021 artist in residence at Ladue Topiary Gardens and was having an outdoor show of his bronze sculptures there, I was eager to make another movie. He's going to give us a tour of that show in a minute, but first, there is one very important fact you need to understand about Clayton. He only works from direct observation and memory. Yawn at dawn. Our middle child, Reeves, had a yawn that involved her entire face when she was born. Mouth wide open, nose wrinkled, eyes screwed up. It intrigued me, so I started a sculpture of her yawning. I should have focused on completing the sculpture quickly. The full face yawn gave way to just a normal yawn within five or six weeks, leaving me with an unfinished sculpture. Fast forward 32 years, Taya, Reeves' daughter, was born with the same yawn. I still had the unfinished sculpture in my studio and was not quite so laissez-faire in my efforts this time. Now, when asked how long does it take to do a sculpture, I can say up to 32 years. And now let's look at his work at Ledoux Gardens. A moment. The natural ease into which the model slipped during a short rest from working in the garden was irresistible. His entire body seems at rest and his mind completely free off somewhere. Miss Gratz, I interviewed 30 some cows before I found the one that reflected the vision I had. Not only was I looking for a distinctive body, but I also wanted her to have horns, which are commonly removed from cows and dairy herds. She was named for her birthplace, the Gratz State Fair. Red Fox. Foxes are an endless enjoyment to watch. They seem to possess an instinct that allows them to be bold one minute then cautious the next, when hunting foxes can display total concentration. Books. Books create a feeling of calm and retreat. They both encourage and remind people of the enjoyment of reading. On the line. Hounds always seem happiest when they're working a scent trail. To watch them doing so is a constant fascination. Fox departing. Spotting a fox slip away ahead of the hounds is another high point in watching this endless duel. The cello player. The body language of musicians says as much about them as their music does. The cello is an instrument that has always held my interest, and cellists generally seem to be jovial souls. Mr. Woodward, Labradors are noted for their affability. They're always there to greet you, 
although when pulling on boots, their enthusiasm might be a bit too in your face. Jack O'Lantern. Not all sculptures go as planned, and this is a good example of one that took its own direction. The loss of control posed an unexpected question. What kind of a lantern would a hare carry if it could carry a lantern? Phoebe. The female nude's place in art is centuries old, and thus mostly a cliché. Seeing it afresh brings out the emotion and the grace of true beauty. The kick. This sculpture grew out of watching our daughter's dog. The dog always seems to have a grin on her face and loves leaping into the air to catch a deflated soccer ball. It didn't take much to conceive of her kicking the ball as well. Sweska is the dog's name, and if not for a trip to Columbia by Clayton's daughter Reeves, she'd not be immortalized in his art. Reeves fell in love with the very sick puppy, and eventually, got her back to the States. Sueska arrived with every parasite known to canines except heartworm. Fortunately, my wife is a veterinarian. It was four months before Sueska was free of parasites, had put on weight and regrown the missing patches in her coat. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? You're a good girl, Sweska. And because your grandpa won't use photographs, you're gonna have to keep jumping for that soccer ball. And your mama's gonna climb up a tree and try to get you to pose. Will somebody please get Sweska some water and a treat while the rest of us go back to looking at Clayton's show? Intruder. Geese often sound the alarm when approached. However, overt aggression in geese is usually limited to the breeding and nesting season. The Equestrian. This sculpture started as a life-size bust of the girl with a big grin. The cause of the smile, being on her pony, enlarged the entire project considerably. couple of hounds. Hounds love to hunt. One can hear the excitement in their voices as they speak when smelling the scent. There's a quality to the sound that inspires the complete attention of those within hearing. Other hounds on hearing the speaker instinctively rush to join the hunt. They're loath to be left behind. Sheep. When someone approaches a flock of sheep, the tension and alarm in the sheep is quite palpable. I started sculpting these sheep in the spring. By the time I had finished, it was summer. Since the rest of the flock had already been shorn, I got to shear sheep for the first time. The third element. Watching a child's fascination with the water coming out of the bathtub faucet was a chance to watch the discovery of a contradiction. Water's visible solidity, but tactile fluidity. The title of the sculpture is derived from the ancient Greeks' listing of water as one of the elements that formed the world. Coursing Greyhounds. The attention here was to capture the two classic positions of a running greyhound, full tuck and full extension, and to do it in a single sculpture depicting their grace and energy. 
creature. Kestrels are small falcons, now less common because of the lack of tree cavities to use as nesting sites. They often hunt by hovering in place as they scan the ground below for prey. Coffee shop dog. Dogs are dependable partners patiently waiting outside coffee shops and stores for our return. In Peru, I noticed one sitting attentively outside a butcher shop. The butcher would occasionally flick the dog a scrap, so that instance might have been more a case of devotion to food. Justin the Elusive Fox Foxes are born curious, but become more cautious as they mature. Thus, they have a reputation of being both bold and elusive. As we come to the end of our tour of Clayton's Ledoux Garden Show, it's hard not to wonder how he can depict foxes and other wild animals without the use of photography. Great Blue. Working only from life has its challenges. Good binoculars and patience are immensely important sometimes. I'm lucky to see Heron frequently at the pond below our house and along the neighboring streams. For me, working with a live model helps install the sense of life. The memory of that original glimpse remains my guide. And although Clayton's path between his remembered glance and his final installed bronze sculpture is very arduous, the life that he so loves to express is always there. J. Clayton Bright is an artist and a man to remember. <laughs>